Hello my friends and welcome back. I am really sorry that it's been a while since I published a video for you, but I am back now and trying to get back into a regular schedule. So what I wanted to do for the next few weeks is help you get back into the swing of painting as well. I hear a lot that some people haven't painted since the pandemic started and I think it's time that we all try to get back to the things that we love, the things that make us happy. So what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you some techniques that I personally use in my own painting practice very, very regularly. These are simple, quick paintings that I go into with no plan, just the desire to paint, enjoy my time, and maybe explore some new techniques, colors, brushes, mediums, whatever. I believe that simplifying your approach, limiting your tools, and giving yourself permission to play and experience the process without the expectation of an outcome can really help get you back on track. That's what I want for myself and that is what I want for you as well. Now let's get started. So for this exercise today, I just have a little sheet of uh, canvas just taped up to a board here. And I just took a canvas sheet from my uh, pad of canvas here. And all I did was I just cut it in half each way. So I had four pieces out of a sheet. It really doesn't matter. I only bring it up because I know I'll get asked if I don't. And as far as it being black, you can paint it black. Uh, you can paint it a, a color if you want, whatever. I like to start with the black base because then I have to work not quite so hard for my shadows. And I'm all about not working quite so hard these days. Now for these exercises, it's really important that you know what colors you have that are opaque and what colors are transparent. So as you can see here, I've got a big bucket of paint. This is a bunch of opaque colors that I pulled out of my stash. And this is a bunch of transparent colors that I've pulled out of my stash. Now, if you're not sure which is which, which color is opaque or transparent, just look at the tube. So on this tube, you can see here, you can kind of see the, the black lines through the paint and it has a white square here. This white square means transparent and you can see that it's transparent here. Other brands like Liquitex, they don't do the paint thing but see this black square? The black square means opaque. Opaque you cannot see through like a wall. Transparent you can see through like a window. Now you might see some colors like this cerulean blue and golden. It's, it looks pretty opaque, but you can kind of see the lines. And the square on here is both white and black. That means translucent. You can kind of see through it, but kind of not. So just get to know your colors and know which is opaque, which is transparent. And for this painting, for this type of exercise, we're gonna want at least one opaque and at least one transparent. And then I'm also bringing in Payne's Gray, which is transparent, but you could use Mars Black if you want to. I'll probably do a few of these types of videos, we'll see, and we'll use a different, I'll use a different combination every time, but I want you guys to get really creative. Just pick two colors that you really like together or pick colors at random. That's kind of what I did here today. And to do this exercise, this kind of painting technique, you absolutely want to have matte medium or gloss medium, glazing medium, some kind of medium that you can use to thin the paint down and make it transparent. All right, to start, I'm gonna use my number eight. This is the number eight in my line of brushes. It feels like a natural bristle brush, but it's synthetic, so it doesn't break and leave uh, bristles in your painting. I just wet it down in my water and then just kind of dry it off. Now I'm just gonna get a little bit of medium, not a ton, I don't want a ton of medium just yet. And my opaque color, so whatever your opaque color is, we're just thinning it down a little bit here with some medium. And I'm gonna start by holding my brush pretty far back. I want this to be a really uh, loose exercise. So if you struggle with being a tight painter, this might be a really good way to help you start to loosen up. I'm just gonna kind of scrub a little bit. This 
this brush can handle that. You don't have to be afraid of that. That's why I made them like this. If you need a good set of scrubbing brushes, you can just follow the link in the video description below. It'll take you to my website where you can get yours. I'm not worried about brush lines. I'm just trying to make something that I think is an interesting shape. I want to keep the bulk of the color up at the top here and let it be faded down here at the bottom. And I think that's a good start. I'm going to dry that with my hair dryer. All right. I think I want to actually a little bit stronger colored than that. So we'll just get a little bit more. And again, I'm going to start at the top. I'm kind of using the side of my brush here, not so much flat. So kind of the edge. So you just kind of press it on like that and scrub. Plop down a little more paint and I'm back to scrubbing. Just break that up a little. I think that's better. It just wasn't quite as intense as I wanted it in the first place. Maybe let's define where the ground is a bit with some horizontal brush strokes. Don't get too, uh, don't get too tight in here. You don't want to come in and try and paint this very solid and very smooth like this. You don't want to come in and start doing grasses or anything. It's just a big scribbly blur right now. Now I'm not going to tell you when I blow dry every single time, but just remember that after every single layer, I'm going to dry it. You should let it dry in between every layer for this type of painting. All right, now I'm going to go to my number eight filbert and I did just wet it in my jar and wipe it on my towel. And we're going to start scribbling in, literally scribbling in some trees. So I'm going to get a little bit of matte medium. I don't need a ton because Payne's Gray is already kind of transparent. I just want to thin it down a little bit. And rub a little bit of that paint off of my brush so it's not caked on. I am going to hold my brush far back again. The farther back you hold it, the more organic your shapes are going to be. When you hold it like this, then we get too dry, you know, so you start coming in here with a tree like this. It'll go. And that's just going to look forced and awkward. So instead, I'm going to come in here like this. I'm going to start in the dark area. I'm going to come up and just kind of say where a tree is going to be. I can see that line. That's all that's important. And then I'm going to kind of scribble just a little bit on it. This is probably not going to show at all at the end. So I don't need to worry about it looking, it doesn't have to look perfect. It doesn't have to look good. If I decide, man, that looks really bad, then I'll just make sure I cover it up later, you know? Let's do that again over here, just kind of scribbling a little bit. It's okay to just, it's enough to have it just kind of resemble a tree. We'll just do a couple. at the base here. I want to make sure that we're creating a bit of a blur between where it's black and where it's moving up into the color. Let's even draw some regular trees. So I'm going to use the tip of the brush and I'm just going to kind of it's barely even there and that's okay. We're just creating some texture, really. Most of this is going to be gone. If it looks too forced, I'm going to wipe it off. All right. I think that's good. All right. Back to my number eight and a little more medium and more of my opaque color. 
And I really did pick these colors pretty randomly today. I did not pick the colors that I'm using because I think they look good together or because of any reason other than they kind of jumped out at me and I said, sure, we'll start with those colors today. A little more medium. I just picked up medium. That's it. I want to keep blending it down into here a little. That's going to help push these trees into the distance and make them feel a little bit foggy. See, remember I said it doesn't matter if that tree looks garbage, it's almost gone. Just a little bit of that misty, foggy color. I think that's good. All right, I'm gonna stick with my number eight and it's time to get some of my red, so a bit of medium. And this is that Permanent Maroon by Golden. Just mix some of that medium in there so it's kind of transparent. And now I'm gonna start at the bottom. Still gonna kind of scrub. I'm not gonna cover all of the, the opaque color, but you could if you wanted to. Scrub it in. Don't be afraid to get your hands in there and wipe out lines and... I'm just gonna pick up some medium. I didn't pick up any more paint. There we go. I'm actually gonna add just a little bit of a deeper version of that color right at the bottom here. Yeah, I'm okay with those brush marks in there. A little deeper right there. Perfect. This is actually a really good way to paint if you are just trying to get yourself out of a funk, if you're trying to practice daily painting, or if you're trying to loosen up and you just want to experiment with colors or brush strokes. So a little more medium and some more Payne's Gray. If you're using Mars Black, use a little bit more medium than what I am using. Payne's Gray is kind of transparent. Mars Black is not. So let's kind of break this up with some, some scribbling. All of these brush strokes going different directions are gonna feel, help it feel like a tangled old forest. Let's get just another little. Another little tree in there. I think I actually want to There we go, just break it up. I feel like I was tightening up a little bit and I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna change brushes. This is my number two round brush and it's a little thrashed. It's got bristles kind of going everywhere and I feel like that will help me get a really gnarly looking set of tree branches and trees. So I'm gonna stick with that, still holding it far back and I'm gonna kind of scribble just a little bit Experiment with all the different types of marks you can make with a particular brush. And I don't get too branchy branchy. Oh, there we go. I like that. So I just kind of put my brush flat and I skid up into the bristles. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing that for a minute. Don't do that with a really nice brush. But if you've got a brush that's already a little bit trashed, go for it. It's 
So if you follow my personal, uh, my personal art Instagram or Facebook, and you're familiar with the kind of art that I do for myself, this, these kinds of exercises is a lot of the type of techniques that I'll use there. And this is actually how I got started painting like that in the first place is doing exercises exactly like this one. I'm just using this brush flat and kind of scooting around with it. I think I also I want to do some splatters. I know some people hate splatters because you don't like to be messy or it never seems to work. So I'm gonna show you, I think I know exactly why some people struggle with it. So this is my number four filbert, and I'm just gonna come in and grab a little bit of paint. I'm gonna drop it somewhere clean. Now, I dunked my, my brush into the water and I have a big old drip on here. And I'm gonna mix that water in with the paint that I brought over. Rather than mixing it in with the pile of paint here, that's just too much paint. I can pull in a little bit more. See how it's just barely running. I don't think I want it quite that runny. That's better. And then I'm gonna pick up a good bit of that paint. Now, I'm gonna get my brush, it's about two inches away from the canvas, and I'm just gonna flick nice and quick just like that you can break it up if you need to get some of that paint that's on your finger back onto the canvas yeah nice and splattery i love love splatters perfect Make sure that's all really dry before we move on or those splatters will smear. All right, back into my medium, back into my opaque color. It's a very meditative process, less so when I'm teaching and recording a video, but when I'm doing this for myself, it's very, very meditative. Plop that down up here. The medium makes it a little transparent so that you can see those trees and everything through it. I'm just lightly scrubbing some of that out and over the trees. Maybe a little bit up and down right there to indicate that there's some grasses being highlighted. Just the edge of my brush, barely, barely making that movement. But because I love splatters, I'm gonna pull a little bit of that over, dip into my water, mix it in there. I'm gonna do a little bit of white splatters too. So maybe the light's kind of shining through here. All right, into my medium again and more of my maroon. Starting at the bottom. I 
And you can take this as far as you want. You can be as detailed to here as you want to be. You know, once once you get the, the groundwork laid, I would not get super detailed in the first couple of layers. But once you start getting to a point where you can see what's happening on your canvas or you can see where you want it to go, you can start getting a little more detailed if you like. But I encourage you to be really, really organic and just let these base layers kind of emerge rather than forcing them to be something. If you really wanted to get crazy, you could pull in another color here, another transparent color to do kind of a double glaze. That could be interesting. All right, now I'm gonna go up to my number 12, Filbert, and I'm gonna get a good amount of medium. I want this next bit to be quite transparent. It's just a little bit of my opaque color. And I'm not gonna scrub quite as much. I'm just gonna kind of paint it down. This is how we're gonna help get that real foggy feel. Maybe right here we can scrub that out just a little and wipe it with our finger. Just don't be afraid to experiment. Don't go into these paintings with any kind of an idea of, you know, having to have an attractive painting at the end. That's not what this is about. This is about, you know, breaking yourself out of a funk, exploring new techniques, getting to know your materials and your paint colors. It's about having fun. I like to keep little piles of paintings like this. I have them all over my studio. Just Paintings that were made just to be made, not to look like anything, not to be sold, not to show anyone, not to do anything with other than enjoy the process. All right, I'm going back to my number two round, just a little bit of medium and more Payne's Gray, mostly Payne's Gray. I'm not really trying to make it too terribly transparent here. I'm going to use my brush flat and just kind of just looking for some shapes, some grunginess to the, to the foliage, make things look wild and overgrown. And some areas here, aren't quite so dark and I want them to feel really dark like they're, you know, underneath some bushes or trees or something that's sitting there. In fact, I'm gonna go back to my number four, my number four filbert. Just cover a little bit more ground here up on the side of my brush. A little tree right there. Maybe there's a tree branch off of it. Gnarly, it's not fully formed. Oh, nice. Got some good splatters. I wasn't sure if that would splatter. But it's always worth trying. Just open yourself up to experimenting here. Yeah, see that just using the side of my brush. 
Let's darken this down here. Pop a little bit over top of the, just make this like a little wild clearing. If you have watched any of my tonalism videos in my tonalism school, you've seen quite a few of these techniques being put into action. If you haven't, you can check out, there's a link in the video description. Uh, those are premium videos, so they do cost, I think they're like $8 each, so they're not very expensive, but they're full length, more advanced technique videos. And we use a lot of these same, same techniques, but in much more, uh, in much more advanced ways with full paintings. Let's try and work on getting a nice wide tree over here. There we go. We'll, maybe we'll bring it off the edge here. So now I am spending a little more time on the details, but I'm still being very loose about it, using my brush in non-obvious ways. So instead of, you know, using the brush like this and coming down, I might point it like this and push up. Really experiment there. This is my long liner, and you do want to use a little extra water when you're using a long liner. But I'm going to hold it at the end. I'm going to extend my arm, stand back, and I'm going to kind of scribble a little bit and let my brush kind of bounce. Nice and gnarly tree branches coming off there. I'll push up into it a little. Oh, that's a bit much. But you know, if you don't like something, just keep a damp brush nearby and look at that. Wipe it right off before it dries. A little scribbling with the, with the long liners, okay. Oh, I wonder what got in there. A little chunk of my opaque paint, I guess. Let's just fill that trunk in. We'll give it some highlights in a little bit so you can really see where it is. But for now, it's just all about the shape. some little dried leaves on the ends there. It's not looking too bad. And look, some of those splatters, like these white splatters, they almost look like little flowers growing in our deep, dark, mysterious forest. And give this forest the personality that you want. I know not everybody likes the, the moody, mysterious stuff. Some people think it's too scary or, or whatever, and that's fine. You don't have to give it the same mood that I do. You don't have to use the same colors I do. Just use these techniques. Do your own thing. Yeah, that's looking good, actually. Still using my liner. I'm going to get some more of my opaque color because I really like the idea down here of those little flowers and highlights. So I'm just going to kind of scribble some other highlights in. There we go. 
I know that looks floaty. It looks like it's floating on top of everything right now, which is not a good look, but it won't look like that once we glaze. So just let it be like that. Maybe a couple more of those little flowery shapes in here. We'll get some little grasses. I think I'm going to splatter just a little bit more. Just very controlled, very lightly. The faster you like that, you're going to get big bloppy splatters. But the slower and more controlled you do it, the finer the mist is going to be. See, we can do it fast, it just everywhere. Just gonna break up some of that. I think that's good. If you get a splatter somewhere you don't like it, again, just a clean, damp brush. I wipe it away. That's one of the reasons it's important that everything is dry before you move on. All right, my number two and some of my opaque, a little bit of medium. And we'll just add a few highlights to uh, our closest trees. One thing I like to do is I've got my medium paint here. I'm just gonna dip the tip of my brush into the medium. So I just have a little ball of medium on the end. It just kind of helps the, I feel like the the highlight not be quite so stark. There we go. Just a little bit of medium I just picked up. be a little aggressive right in there, but it's not a big deal. Let's just add a few detailed grasses again. Just dust out the base of those, but I can hide them if they're too if they're too much or too aggressive. So just remember, there's always another layer that you can do. If you don't like something, layer over it. All right, I think we're just about done. I am going to put maybe just a little bit of a solid opaque, maybe just a little bit right in here. Just say there's a little moon or something and I might not like that. I might take it out, but let's just see. You don't know unless you try. I'm going to wipe out one side so it's only solid on the inside edge. No, oh, I definitely like that. St 
Sticking with my two, cleaned it off, just some Payne's Gray. There, see how I kind of kick those in if they're a little aggressive? I just put the Payne's Gray at the base and it kind of covers up that messy look, gives it a bit of a shadow to attach it to the ground. Same on the tree over here. That was way too aggressive, so I'm just gonna get a little medium and a little my Payne's Gray kind of glaze some of it out. There we go. I think I am just about done. So what I'm gonna do is get a little bit of medium, a little bit of my opaque color. I'm gonna sign it and then, I'm not done yet, but I wanna sign it before I finish. Dry it. And I'm gonna give it one more quick glaze with some medium and some of my transparent color. Be selective. Maybe I'll glaze that a little bit harder, push it into the distance a bit more. And I glazed this front tree very, very little. 